Ah, Sakurai. What a beautiful game you've crafted over the years. From the days of Fat Pikachu to the modern times of Weeb Heaven, you have consistently blessed us with quality content at a reasonable cost. Honestly, there isn't much more you could do for us at this point. I mean, hell, we even got Goku, Trunks, and Gohan in Smash Bros. Aside from giving me my boy Geralt, there's not really much that we could ask for. Banjo in Smash. Wait, what? Banjo in Smash. You mean the Banjo in Smash? It's true, after years and years of begging, being shot down, more begging, and more being shot down, we've finally reached a point in Smash Bros where not only is Banjo and Kazooie going to be represented, but Sonic, the Belmonts, Snake, Pac-Man, Ridley, and King K. Rule are all finally in Smash Bros. I feel like I'm living out a fever dream that I had when I was 10 years old. And honestly, while I couldn't be more excited about this, there's one thing that didn't quite make sense when I saw Banjo and Kazooie's reveal trailer. Why is King K. Rool chilling with Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong? The three look like the oldest of buddies, just three straight dudes napping in a wood cabin five feet apart. I mean, I get it, they were all Rareware buddies, all coming from games that Rare had pioneered. But this still doesn't really make sense, does it? Through Smash Bros' own admission, King K. Rool is to Donkey Kong what Bowser is to Mario. Except, honestly, I feel like he's way worse. I mean, King K. Rool constantly steals Donkey Kong's bananas, puts his friends in barrels, and ravages his island. For God's sake, his final smash is one of the only ones that has nothing to do with the opponent he's facing. He literally just throws them at Donkey Kong's island, and then blows it up. You never even see the person who was hit with the final smash, you just see Donkey Kong's island explode. That's kind of a dick move. It's some old-fashioned pure-blooded hatred. We're talking Hannibal vs. Rome, Cloud vs. Sephiroth, All Might vs. All for One. Save to say there is no love between these guys, and yet here they are, super chill and even excited to see fellow Rareware buddies Banjo and Kazooie. Well, what if I told you there was a perfectly logical and canon explanation for why these guys are so cool all of a sudden? And it all starts with the first DLC character. And no, I'm not talking about the plant, I'm talking about Joker. See, Joker is from Persona 5, and in this game he's the leader of a group of vigilantes known as the Phantom Thieves. Aside from romancing his teacher, breaking the law, and just generally looking cool, Joker and his merry group of degenerates perform a public service by entering the Cognitive Realm where they jump into the hearts of the most deceitful, disgusting, and dastardly folk in all of Japan. They do this in order to infiltrate the egos of these evil folk and quote-unquote steal their hearts, which is a fancy way of saying they force a person's conscience to awaken. This basically means that if you are, say, a teacher who takes advantage of their students, beating them, sexually assaulting them, and putting them into comas, well, after Joker and his phantom thieves are done stealing your heart, you will awaken the next morning racked with guilt and have no other option but to admit your wrongdoing and accept punishment for your transgressions. It's basically like Inception, except instead of infiltrating someone's dreams and planting an idea in their head, making them think it was their idea all along, Joker is infiltrating someone's heart and stealing their most negative and closely held character flaws, making them think it was their idea all along when they confess the next morning. This is usually accomplished by entering the subconscious cognitive palaces of their targets and stealing a person's heart, which usually manifests in the cognitive realm as a very closely guarded treasure. So what does this have to do with King K. Rule? Well, everything. Because in Joker's gameplay reveal, we were treated to a nifty little 7 second clip of Joker dashing towards the golden crown of none other than the king himself, snatching it off the ground and dashing away. That's right, Joker made his splash and smash by stealing the heart of the evil and antagonistic Kremlin known as King K. Rule. 
thus filling the king with so much guilt and shame at having ravaged Donkey Kong's island and denizens so many times that he could think of nothing better to do than confront DK at his house and ask for forgiveness. At which point it would be up to Donkey Kong at what he would do next, and seeing as how he still has access to his number one coping mechanism of potassium-rich bananas, DK would probably take it easy on him. I mean, it has been decades since Donkey Kong was wronged by King K. Rool. The last time King K. Rool was the main villain in a Donkey Kong game was in 1997. So maybe a heartfelt apology and a fresh banana was all it took to turn three once bitter rivals into three semi-cool roommates. Who knows, Joker also stole Wario's bike, so maybe we'll see Wario and Mario put their differences aside when Waluigi comes to Smash. Anyways, thank you for watching, and please do me the favor of stealing my heart by clicking subscribe and dropping a like down below. Comments also rock, and I love hearing what you guys have to say. Anyway, this has been so good, and I'm gonna sign off with your weekly reminder to go out there, read a good book, play a fun game, watch an exciting show, but most importantly, keep on loving good stuff.